42 minutes after 7. You're still watching the AM show. I'm Benis Abubeju. Now, before we delve into the issue of unemployment, let me pick a few of your messages here. And uh, this one says, I want to know from the government if you will not post us. And this is coming from a member of the teacher trainees. And he says he's waited too long. And uh, this one is talking about uh, health of presidential candidates. And you're saying that uh, you suggest that if possible through social media uh, we should push that our constitution should publicize the health status of presidential candidates before election this is jb from Drabuso. and then you're saying uh, this is coming from you didn't add your name you say ghana needs a change and the change is not about ndc and mpp because uh, they come with huge promises and pledges which is not achievable. Well, the World Bank released a report earlier this year on jobs in Ghana. The report revealed that about 38% of the youth in the country who are between 15 to 24 years do not have jobs. The report dubbed landscape of jobs in Ghana looked at the opportunities for youth inclusion in Ghana's labor market. The report also recommended that government must work towards equipping the youth with relevant skills through the educational system. Now, usually when the topic of graduate unemployment is raised, some strongly believe graduates need to be entrepreneurial and create jobs for themselves instead of just looking to government. Well, lead researcher and a senior economist with the World Bank, Sarah Johansson, during the launch of that particular report, said the youth in the country will be in a better position to get or create jobs if their educational foundation is right. Today I've got um, one gentleman, Desmond uh, Brest Baini, who is the president of the Unemployed Graduates Association, and they're calling on the Electoral Commission. Uh, they are saying instead of uh, the EC employing uh, accountants and lawyers and other people in the civil service to take up jobs during this year's election, the EC should consider unemployed graduates. So let's find out from him his reasons and why he thinks uh, that they deserve to be given that job. Hello, thank you for joining us. So really, why this call and why now? Okay, um, we would realize that um, the call to national duty, it's an equal responsibility that every Ghanaian anywhere must take that charge. So we as Unemployed Graduate Association of Ghana and the Unemployed Teachers Association of Ghana said to ourselves that this is an opportunity to serve our country and serve it right. And how do we help? It's an election year. And the, it is the Electoral Commission's intent to use um, lawyers and accountants. But that move has been um, hit on by the Director of Elections for the National De Democratic Congress, Mr. Samuel Ofosuampo. So as an association, we thought it right that why don't we make ourselves available for that job? Because we have the professional um, skills to um, as, um, take that task and execute it very well. So let's um, make ourselves available for this job. Um, the main idea, the rationale behind this core, it's simple. It is my interest, it is your interest, that on the day of election, it will be very peaceful, it will be transparent and very fair. So as graduates who are unemployed, the devil finds work for the idle hand. So let's involve the graduates in the mm. process. So why don't you volunteer? Have you spoken to the EC? Have you exactly. told them um, you're willing to help? The, um, it's a two-body calling for this. And the Unemployed Graduate um, Unemployed Teachers Association of Ghana is stationed in Kumasi. 12 p.m. and 12 noon today, they should be in Accra. By 2 p.m., we will be at the Electoral Commission office to um, place a formal demand to that effect. All right. So uh, this is the conversation, or this is the issue that has brought you here today. But many want to find out, uh, who are you? When did you go to school? Why uh, aren't you, you know, venturing into some job or creating a job for yourself? Instead, uh, you call yourself the president of the Ghana uh, unemployed Graduate Association. Most people have argued that as president for the Unemployed Graduate Association of Ghana, I'm working. Yes, indeed, I'm working, mm -hmm. but it's a voluntary service. Um, the key, it's a course. The course goes beyond this one breast binding. I believe that a graduate after school should not be unemployed. 
and you cannot be um, you should not be unemployed one by creating opportunities for yourself and government helping you create that opportunity you will bear with me that society is very dynamic and it is not everybody that sees opportunity and tap into it so with others you have to tap them to see the opportunity and they take good advantage of them some seize the opportunity and grab it themselves but we are in a system that and the recent world bank reports that you read that about 15 and um, 15 to 24 years um, youth between the ages of 15 to 24 years, 48% are stuff. unemployed. And you realize that when you go further to uh, um, 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 read that report extensively, you realize that the hardest hits are the ladies. Uh, exactly. Men. Yes, and it brings back to the global statistics which was released by the World Bank, which placed unemployment around 194 million, um, um, million which also goes further to state that if you are not careful by close of this year, we'll have about 2.2 million graduates join the labor force who will be unemployed. It's a global issue, but to address it, we have to get our own approach. What is the Ghanaian approach to this? It's very simple. It is not the unemployed graduate association of Ghana. Who wants to put themselves out there as unemployed graduate association of Ghana? But it's a real situation. How do we address it? One, our educational system has a key issue. Our educational system does not have a direct link with corporate um, institutions in Ghana. Therefore, there is this huge gap of mismatch. There is nothing like our educational system is never directly linked to vocational and technical aspects. The skills, the approach to do things within the corporate sector is different from what is being taught in the school. Whereas when you go to other countries like Germany, US, the France, um, they have World of Work Centers. What the World of Work Centers in the universities does is that they groom graduates to fit into the world of ma work market. For instance, if you are reading geography, they tell you the opportunities within that sector mm. and how to tap into it mm -hmm. and how to go about this thing. So I believe very well that um, two months ago, the Unemployed Graduate Association of Ghana realized that it's an equal responsibility for everyone to come on board for us to address this issue. So we are we, we said to ourselves, let's engage in the stakeholders forum, which we have started on. Next week, we are likely to meet the Ghana Status Card Service. We believe that they have a key role to play because if you can't tackle the situation if you don't have the statistics. Mm. We believe very well that it is not deliberate that the um, Ghana Status Card Service has not come out with the, um, those statistics. Something is holding them. We want to get to them, know what is holding them how as an association we can help to push the agenda. It's a collective responsibility. Now you talk about uh, uh, helping your members mm -hmm. realize opportunities and create opportunities for themselves. How do you do that? Thank you very much. Mm, by the help of the media, like you've called me here, I'm speaking, someone will hear me as an unemployed person and for unemployed. The person will reach me and say that he has opportunities. Within the last years, as I took over, it has been good. We have been able to um, get direct and um, temporary and um, um, permanent jobs for our 326 graduates. It's good as an association. I feel happy because we are working. This we do at a 0% um, cost. And we've been able, as I speak with you now, we are currently working with a, a U.S. investment company called Reef Urban Investment. We are recruiting 500 um, graduates for an online placement job. And we have members that we have empowered to go into our into uh, in places like Teacher Mante, um, Pampasu Prokesi, or Brejima, Yakoku, AJB, Wale Wale, Telinsi, and uh, Wulinsi. But um, then again, too, I want to bring this experience to um, on board. When we say that government must do this, government must do that, and it's not as if the association is a lazy association doing nothing, but it's an experience we had in 2012 was um, a member of us which we empowered to go into our break at Wulinsi. If you've been to Wulinsi before, you realize that the road work network as at then was too bad. So this graduate was able to grow his crop, was able to harvest it, um, but bringing it to the market was another issue. He lost so much because the road network was very bad and he couldn't transport his goods to the market to sell at a good price. So those who came would give them their prices because th this is the case that you've suffered to grow something. You want it to go, so you give it at a cheaper rate rather than letting it stay there to um, rot. So that has been the instances. And in an instance that um, we have, in, in some instance too, what we do is that when you realize that you have entrepreneurial skills and you want to 
go on, on with your job. Personally, myself, I, I, um, I have used my own funds to assist people, including in shoe making, in beats making, to start a business, to keep it going. Um, what happened when it ha what that thing does is that um, when I help you and you're able to establish your own business and your business grow, it means that the next two, three years you can employ someone or create someone and to get. You see, the whole idea of solving the solution of unemployment is the, um, the formal sector and the informal sector working together. Mm. For instance, I was having a discussion with someone yesterday. I told him that if you give me 10,000 Ghana cities, I will employ 12 graduates and employ um, about 20 um, people from the informal sector. He asked me why. And I said, a cost of a refrigerator ranges between um, uh, an average of 600 to 800 Ghana cities. I'll buy 12 refrigerators, sell ice waters in the principal um, 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 areas of Accra, mm. get to 12 graduates to handle each refrigerator, and get for them at least two, two people to sell the water um, that they produce. So with all that you do as president of the uh, unemployed Graduates Association of Ghana, and with all that you said here, do you really consider yourself unemployed? Mm. You see, no, I said that before, that most people said that I'm, 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 on, I'm, I'm not unemployed, and I, I agree with them. My passion, the whole issue that drives me is that at the end of the day, when I wake up every morning, I have two things that keep me going. One, money is good, pleasure is equally good, but do not betray a friend or a good friend or the so. And you pray to God to bless you abundantly and resist temptation. I have that in mind because in the course of my duty, I know that someone can influence me. I wake up with that thought. Mm. So you talk about influence. Now, uh, many people, quite a number of people believe that you're actually working with some political parties. You're doing the bidding of some political parties to paint the, probably to paint the current uh, government black. Not at all. Um, anyone who says that have not followed our activities, and anyone who says that also it um, acts in, in a manner which he or she has not been unfair to the association, mm -hmm. I, would, I would state here that the Unemployed Graduate Association of Ghana, right from day one to the last committee that sat on the National Youth Policy, we were part of it, those drafted the National Youth Policy. We have, been, we, we have twice been invited by the President of the Republic of Ghana to the Flagstaff House to deliberate on issues concerning unemployment. We sat on the committee that drafted the National Youth Manifesto. In an instance that the President um, um, gave support to, yes, gave support to about 107 entrepreneurs. We applauded the um, present administration for saying so. Whatever being the case, we started a move that the president should create a fund to help people. So if the fund has come and it is helping young graduates, why wouldn't we applaud them? We look at issues when the issues are good. And you will say we are very selfish as an association. I would say this. We are selfish in the instance that it must be job for us or we giving us that enabling environment to create that job. So if I come to you and you can give me a job to benefit my people and it won't influence my person, I will take it, irrespective of who you are. And in so doing, you can't do that without negotiating with the present government. You can't do that without negotiating with other political parties and other stakeholders. They are all major stakeholders. So far as our stakeholders forum is even concerned, we are, we are going to meet every political party in this country because at the end, it's an election year. PPP can win, NDC can win, NPP can win, CPP can um, win. So we have to engage them, know the package they have for us, how we can improve that package you have for us. You want to do this that way. You cannot do it this way. This is the right way to go. Let's do it that way. So we are very selfish in our demand, um, in, in, in our activities, because it must, um, it must be of benefit to us. So that is all the association is all about. If you realize we are not um, an association that glorifies ourselves and um, hitting the street day in, day out, you have never hit the street before. Our activity, we believe that whatever being the case, whatever, no matter how huge the situation is, you need to dialogue to get to the bottom mm. of the issue. So we have always used dialogue as a tool. In an instance that we don't, uh, we, in, in some instance we get, some instance we don't get. And I can, I would say on authority, I would say for a fact and hit my chest to say that 
I just want to my name. I've never accepted even one CD or pure order from someone to influence my job as president for the unemployed graduate association of Ghana. What I want to say is that I'm causing change. What I want to say is that I want to wake up and someone call me that this when I got a job, you were looking for me. It, do you get any cuts from that? Do you, is there any strategy that, okay, uh, if you get a job through uh, this means or through the Unemployed Graduates Association's work, when you, when you get your job, uh, you, you can give us some... some form Most people have argued from that point that why are we not taking money to offer jobs? But my point is, um, we, want to s we want to change lives. Someone in an instance will not be able to get for you Someone in us, you see, people are unemployed. For, uh, some people are unemployed for a very long time. So when they get a job, some people were living in debt even before they got a job. So they are now coming to pay their debt. So if you cause them, if you make it mandatory for them to pay um, you that amount, I feel that you're putting pressure on the same people that you are helping. But voluntary, I would say for a fact, I wouldn't lie to you that there are hundreds of those people that we have helped, that came to show appreciation. That is how we run. So how well, does uh, someone join the Unemployed Graduates Association? Oh, we, our office is at Magina New Road. You call you and we register you. We have forms, we register you. The, um, you have an office? Yes. So who funds or who runs the place? You need money. I just told you one of the ways we fund the office, that um, members, and when we help them get a job, but 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 you're not you're not sure of consistent supply because if you help me get a job, and uh, maybe my first salary, I decide okay, you know what, I'm gonna cite, mm -hmm. I'm gonna cite to the unemployed on unemployed graduates association because you help me get a job. You're not assured of constant supply because I asked if there was a, a way of getting people to contribute some amount yes. of money, and you said no, it wasn't a hard and fast rule. So, yes. uh, how are you sure that, for example, in this month of septem <laughs> September, you're going to have people mm -hmm. bring in money so you can run an office. I'm sure you pay electricity bills, mm -hmm. you pay water bills, you talk about forms, you, you pay for printing <laughs> and, and, other, and other processes. So who funds the Unemployed Graduates Association? Thank you very much. Um, there is this gentleman in Madina, he's called Karim Phillips. He operates an NGO called Young Heart Foundation. The office that we operate, partially he's taking cost of all those, um, those things. Voluntarily he came on board and said that I have passion for what you do. So I feel I should help. It's a cost that everyone must come on board so that we would help get rid of this issue. So he helps us. And then again, we have this in here. And every year, what most people don't know is that every year, we don't have less than 10 people from the universities, University of Ghana, University of Cape Coast, University um, mm -hmm. Kwame Kwame University of Ghana. All the investors. Yes, come to, um, to us with projects, to assist them in project works. So that's another way you, yes, you, you fund. Okay, uh, but uh, now your call is for the EC to consider um, some of your members in the upcoming elections. And uh, the, the plan for the EC is to use some professionals and uh, uh, like accountants and, mm -hmm. and civil servants. And uh, you are calling, you want the EC to you know, employ some of your members so that they can do this job. Mm -hmm. Do you think you have the requisite know-how? Do you think you have the capacity to exactly. do that job? The only difference between the member, um, the lawyer who is a member of the Ghana Bar Association and the member, uh, a lawyer who is not a member of the Ghana Bar Association is that one is working, one gets money to pay his dues, so he's in good standing, so he's a member of the association. The same applies to the um, ICAG and, and the chartered accountant. So what we are saying is that you have individuals who have the skills, who have the, the professional background to execute the tax, but one way or the other, they have not been fortunate in finding a job. So it's a humble but aggressive plea mm. to the Electoral Commission to right. consider our members. We mm. believe that they are beyond our members there are even thousands of unemployed graduates. So in our release, we stated very well that the EC should consider members of the Unemployed Graduate Association of Ghana, the Unemployed Teachers Association of Ghana, and other graduates. What it means is that in an instance that the EC calls us and say that we are giving you 10,000 slots so far as this issue um, and this demand is concerned, what it means is that members of our, the association 
will benefit before those graduates who are not members of the association. But it's a collective call that all unemployed graduates must be considered. All right. Um, okay, thank you. Hold on, Desmond. I have uh, Eric Jacques, who is head of communications at the EC on the line. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Now, will the EC consider unemployed graduates uh, in its data collection process this year? Thank you very much. Um, I wanted to put on record that the EC has always uh, engaged graduates um, to take part in election activities at different different levels um, relative to what um, they can do and uh, relative to their meeting the core criteria relevant to election administration. We've always engaged graduates at different levels across the country. Okay, so and what do you make of this call by the Unemployed uh, Graduates Association? Now, they are asking that instead of using professionals uh, in your data collection process and other electoral processes this year, you should consider them. Thank you very much. That's why I'm saying that we've always considered them if they make themselves, uh, or whenever they make themselves available and they meet the criteria required for election season. Graduates have always been a part of uh, our activities. You see, when it comes to elections administration, um, we don't normally headhunt for people because they are graduates or they are professionals or they hold uh, some, some qualification because beyond the uh, uh, academic uh, professional uh, qualification, uh, elections administration requires that you possess some very key um, competencies. Okay, that is why the rules even make provision that uh, in the light of these competencies we are talking about, if we engage people to take part in election activities, we publicize their names together with their um, photographs and then make them available to the candidates and then the political parties. And they also have the, the room, the opportunity to object to people who don't meet this criteria. Um, I'm talking about to engage in elections this year, you, you must be seen to be politically neutral, non-partisan, you must have experience, you must be of uh, integrity, okay? And we need people who even know the terrain, where they are supposed to go and then what, work. So it's not just a matter of headhunting for graduates uh, to, 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 to take part in election activities. And as I've said, we've always engaged uh, graduates to the extent that they meet the criteria required for doing elections administration. All right. So um, this unemployed graduates association and members and executives hope to meet you today. Uh, are you ready to have some form of negotiation with them? Please, if, I, if, if, if you may come again. I'm saying that uh, members and executives of the Unemployed Graduates Association of Ghana are hoping to meet uh, the Electoral Commission today. Are you ready to negotiate with them? Oh, if, if, if there's a body, a group of persons who want to meet with the Electoral Commission, there are, there are channels, there are avenues. They need to write formally to the Commission and then get the audience attention of the Commission and the appropriate time if the Commission so decides or commission thinks it's necessary to engage with them. Why not? They would engage with them. So I don't know whether they've, they've taken these basic steps of, of writing to the commission formally, um, requesting uh, an engagement of a sort to which they would want to come forward and then meet with the commission. Okay. And uh, uh, the president of that association is here. Have you done that? Have you gone through the that's basic what processes? That's we intend doing 2 p.m. today. With, okay. Yes. So, so you're not hoping to have a meeting today. You're just no. hoping to start the process. Yes. All right. Okay. So uh, back to you, Mr. Uh, Jakwasu. For somebody sitting at home who may think that uh, per the criteria you mentioned, the qualifying would want to uh, offer or render service in this year's electoral process, how do they go about it? Um, I would advise them. I would advise that they start making contact with the, the districts and the regional offices of the commission um, to engage because election duty is done on the ground at the, at the, at the, at the, at the constituency, at the district and at the polling station level. So I would rather advise them to, 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 to make contact with our various offices across the country and then, and then finding ways and means of it. Uh, of thank engaging you. our people at the levels because uh, um, 
We will engage different categories of persons. We engage returning officers. We engage presiding officers. We engage verification officers. We engage pilot issuers. And this year round, we are also engaging collating uh, officers at the constituency level. Okay? Okay. Uh, thank you and, very uh, much. And all these levels require different levels of uh, qualification. To be a returning officer, naturally, you should be somebody who knows your constituency very well. Okay, you have experience in this job, you are politically neutral. If you are talking about academic qualification, definitely you need to be a senior um, public servant, preferably of a graduate level. Okay, so it's just a matter of getting in touch with uh, our, our, our structures on the ground and then making the necessary contact. Uh, that was uh, Eric Kofi Jakosi, he's the head of communications at the EC, responding to a call uh, by the Graduate Unemployment, uh, Unemployed Graduates Association uh, to consider them in this year's electoral process. So you heard him, uh, uh, Desmond Brest Baini, and he, Desmond is the president of the Unemployed Graduates Association in Ghana. So your final words. Um, I believe very well that when you are um, when you are heading towards um, the king's palace and you have someone who is directly connected to the king tells you that this is the way to get to the king what you do is that you follow that procedure to get to the king so I believe very well that what he said it's very right we'll consider what he has stated and also get things right and get to the, um, the EC so that at the end of the day what we want for our members will come to pass but when it comes to the qualification I would say for a fact that our members have it so we don't have an issue with that in terms of being neutral to the system everyone would bear within the test of time the last five years has proven that the unemployed graduate association organized an association which is not inclined to any political party we say things as it should be mm. all right uh, thank you so much uh, this has been my banner on the air i'm sure a few of your comments uh, before we Go on a quick break here. Uh, Samari Abraham says, I don't really know our fate now. Our elder brother completed school for a number of years now, but he still does not have a job. And uh, this means that he cannot help push the young ones because the family has invested in him. And this one says, in fact, uh, the unemployment situation in the country is really bad and you think that it's as a result of poor governance teachers nurses including university graduates couldn't secure jobs uh, under this administration you say and yet they encourage us to vote for them again and you say we are waiting for them keep those comments coming in on the number 0560 800 we'll take a quick break when we come back we'll be handling am talk please stay with us <laughs>